This time on IFAF. Idaho Falls and Fairies. Yeah. (laughs) Just like that. I'm not here for a long time. I'm here for a good time. Is this a Carly hot take? It's a hot take. I definitely would encourage people to make sure to take as many steps as possible against chafing. IFAF. Idaho Falls Local. Independent. Alternative Media with Mike Nelson and Carly Morgan. All right, the lights are down low. The studio temperature is a crisp 69 degrees here at Podcast Park. Nice. Disneyland turns 69. Also nice. And uh, the kids have gone to bed. The adults are talking now in this late night cocktail party we call IFAF. All right, coming up on this episode, we will we try? I don't know if we will. 27-year-old food? Probably. (laughs) We're a pair of goblins. (laughs) That we got off of eBay. We'll show you a cool demo with some Tesla Cybertrucks here in town. Is Rigby Lake clean? New ice cream coming to Rexburg? And what about a new horror movie featuring Mormon missionary sisters? Ooh, spooky. First things first, I'm a realist. (laughs) And then Winco got new shopping carts. Ooh, Look at lot. these. <laughs> oh, yeah. All brand new. And they got them all at the same time. Not just a few. And look at the cup holder. That's pretty nice. Yeah. As a tumbler carrying girly, mm-hmm. all about those cup holders. Yeah. And I don't know if it'll fit like a 64 ounce, but mm-hmm. I think a 32 ounce for sure. Oh, sure. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, and also I'm so glad they finally upgraded because I feel like half of their carts had bum wheels, you know, yeah, I've and there's, a, ooh, there's yeah. nothing more annoying. Uh, do you ever get something at the store and crack it open in the store and drink it in the store? No, that makes me feel too weird. Okay. I think there's some people that are hung up about that. I'm 50 50. I don't know. I mean, so long as you pay for it, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, I know. know? I'll pay for it. Yeah, just make sure you've got money in your bank or else you're. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) I'm sorry, I don't have the 34 cents for that smart water. Right, right. Or whatever it is now. Three dollars. Yeah, I was going to say, definitely not 34 cents. <laughs> I'm a water snob, but I'll also mm-hmm. buy the uh, good to go two for two dollars. Oh, sure. Yeah. Water, too. Mm-hmm. We went and played Frisbee randomly in the park the other night. I got like four different Frisbees from Amazon. Right. And mm-hmm. none of them are quite right. None oh, of them I don't are... know. I liked that one that was just a big circle. That okay. one was nice. Yeah, those cut through the air. Right, right. Well, because it was a little windy because it's Idaho. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know? And they just and, cut right through. Right. It was perfect for that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry that I'm such a terrible shot, though. <laughs> no, no. That's the, that's the thing about Frisbee. It's a cooperative. Mm-hmm. It's always kind of tough playing with kids, like boys especially. <laughs> right. Girls are more cooperative, but mm-hmm. boys think the goal is to throw the Frisbee as far as possible. Right. Right, right. And I always have to remind them, I played Frisbee with uh, a friend and his kids the other day. Mm -hmm. And I had to keep reminding the boys, remember, the goal is to get it to the person you're throwing it to. Mm -hmm. Oh, remember, the goal is, (laughs) oh, (laughs) remember, the goal is, and you know, just, they'll get it. Sometimes I needed to be told two or three times as a kid. Kids are kids, man. They do all kinds of dumb stuff. Yeah. Like that one kid. At Winco. Oh? Yeah. So I don't know if you heard about this. Apparently this kid, I think he was like four or five, really young, uh, stole some gum from Winco. Oh, no. And uh, he and his dad were escorted back into the store. Or parent. I don't know if it was his dad. Uh, They were escorted back into the store. Legal guardian. mm Mm-hmm. By loss prevention. And uh, dad was charged a $250 fine. What? Right. For theft. Here in town? Right. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. B- well, because there's a zero tolerance theft policy there, which makes sense because that's why their prices are low. Sure. And I mean, I know kids oh, steal shit all but the time. Kid, well, <laughs> and and five yeah. or four, I see I, ta- I see. I want, I take. I mean, right. that's, that's the most they think about it. Mm-hmm. They're not thinking I about mean, any it, other moral, moral or ethical conundrum. I, I don't entirely agree with that because I know when I was a kid once, I was probably about five years old and my brother 
stole a candy bar or something from the store. And when we got to the car, he like pulled it out of his sleeve or something and was like, shh. And I was like, Mom, Tyson, stop! <laughs> and we immediately went back and gave it back Carly. and stuff. <laughs> oh, he was pissed. Oh, I think yeah. it was actually one of those big fat Tootsie Rolls. Uh-huh. So it wasn't even like that good. Oh, yeah. You know? But anyway, yeah. So we had to go back, apologize, all that stuff. Some stores, you know, you hear about like raiding and looting and other bigger major metropolitan areas. Mm-hmm. And they're like, they just let it happen. Right. Now, I guess. Well, or yeah, did, because or... the liability is too much. Right. You know, because if you hurt that person or, you know, if something happens within the altercation where that person gets hurt, that, then they can sue the entire store. People walking out with 75-inch TVs mm-hmm. and no stopping them. Yep. It just seems weird to me. Yeah, a little bit. But it also is weird to me when you go to Vegas Mm -hmm. or even Anaheim, like Disneyland and surrounding areas, you know, when there's a security guard at the CVS. Right. Or the Walgreens. Mm -hmm. Weird. That's weird to me, too. Yeah. I don't want it to become like that. Yeah. Well, and I know that, like, stores can reasonably detain people, like, if they think that they've stolen something. Okay. But they can't do a ton You know, like they can't necessarily force them to turn out their pockets or anything like they have to know that that person took it and they can hold them just as like just long enough to get the cops there, basically. Okay. You know, so, yeah, like there's just not a lot you can do as a store without making yourself liable for a lawsuit. Watch your five year old's parents. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you know, and that's kind of what it comes down to, too, because like maybe the kid didn't know. But like, yeah, you know, and I get that it's so hard to because like dad's trying to bag the stuff and check out and all that jazz. But like, you got to keep those kids on lock. Oh no. Dad was his, his accomplice. He was like, Hey son, (laughs) put that in your pocket. Right. They won't do anything to you, buddy. Yeah. Yeah, Right. (laughs) There are some parents who would $250 fine. Mm -hmm. Like I know some people, or I've heard of some people who will like take their baby strollers into stores and just shove them full of like groceries and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Just pack them full of stuff. Okay. Lots of follow-ups. Let's get right to them. Mm Mm-hmm. Pioneer Day is this Wednesday. Yes, we finally got it right. <laughs> July 24th. Oh. Can't wait to see them all LARPing. Once again, we were idiots. Surprise! <laughs> so I wanted to put the parade footage up. We had done it in an independent video mm-hmm. earlier, a week before. I wanted right. to put that up in our latest video, and so I was just like, I'll drop it right here. Well, the place where I dropped in, I did it like 3x speed. Mm -hmm. So you could just sort of see us walking through the parade route in case you missed our previous video. Well, I happened to put it over a part of the conversation. We were talking about what angle to take a selfie from. (laughs) Right, right. I remember that now. So, you know, kind of an important part to to see visually. (laughs) So I hope you got that. Oopsie. Sorry. In case you didn't. Dads take it from below, moms take it from above. If you're normal, you take it from maybe just above eye level. Yeah. Right around there. There Mm -hmm. are extremes, and we suggest moderation. Yes. Okay. By the way, I know way more about water curtailment than I ever wanted to. Oh, you finally read the thing? Well, just because I I was so embarrassed after last episode, I was like, I don't know. (laughs) I don't know what's going on. But Frank held his big meeting, and everybody Mm -hmm. came, and he made his point, and... um, and I think we, we have to sort of avoid, what did YouTube tell me or Facebook, like political or social? Okay, okay. Well, and it's not political. We're just talking about water. Not really, yeah. Hydrate, kids. But, <laughs> and I will tell you, after learning all about water curtailment, I'm kind of going, eh, what okay. can I do? Right. I mean, I know about water rights. I know plenty because I've helped people sell homes on parcels of land that come with water rights. like. Right. In uh, the water doctrine in Idaho is first in time, first in right. Right. So if, I mean, going back 150 years when we first started settling this area, if you laid claim to some land and said, I've got the right to water this, no one after that could argue with you, basically. Right. Basically, but, uh, I was here first, na, 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 na. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Na, 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 na. <laughs> Just like that. Yeah. <laughs> but I guess a few years ago... We made a bad deal based on bad data with some people downstream, mostly Magic Valley Twin Falls. Treasure oh. Valley is Boise. I learned that difference, too. <laughs> Oof. We messed up a lot last episode, huh? And, uh, I mean, you know, we did yeah. what we did. Yeah. Well, and we were just coming off a break. I think we deserve it, you know? Yeah. 
But uh, water is definitely important to us here in East Idaho. And the mm -hmm. lieutenant governor was there saying, yes, it's important to us too. And it's not the people necessarily in Boise that did the bad thing, although they could have intervened, but they didn't. Right. But all right. So there's that. <laughs> We're going to be just fine. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Huge news article I saw last week about the Chapel of the Pines in the Valley of the Shadow of Death at the Garden of Good and Evil or whatever the hell it's called. <laughs> the Valley of the Cloud Sanatorium. Yeah. That basically affirmed what we said. So in this case, we're nice. not idiots. Not only are we not idiots, but we were there first with the two basic pieces yeah, yeah. of information, which is L is okay. Mm -hmm. And um, the name of the place was kind of a joke, even though it sounds sort of... I don't know, mysterious or sinister, mm -hmm. having a sanitarium out in the middle of the forest. <laughs> right. Although, honestly, that's something I would pull. You know, yeah. Like, well, and you know, back in the day, people used to like name their houses. You yeah. know, this was like Casa, whatever, da da da. Morgan Manor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you know what? I think that if I um, bought something a little bit more grand, mm -hmm. you know, I would probably give it a nice little name, maybe even get a little plaque for it, you know? Sure. Yeah, in my little. Place now, I probably won't, but someday. Nelson someday. Estates. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> and it's one shack on five acres with a river. <laughs> hey, good enough. Five acres is pretty hot. Yeah. Want to shout out Matt Hill at Aerialize Visuals for that hot, 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 hot new intro. It's too hot. <sighs> it's so good, though. Hot damn. Well, and our new outro is pretty cool, too. Oh, yeah, with the neon light flashing uh -huh. on and off. Yeah, that was a mutual friend who suggested that. And, man, it looks so good. You did such a good job on that. Yay, production value. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, okay. <laughs> you know what? We need to give ourselves a little credit here and there. It's okay. Sure. Yeah. Sure. More follow-ups because there's just so much going on. In fact, one conclusion that I reached today in sort of preparing for this show was, oh, we got to talk about this. We got to talk about this. We got to talk <laughs> <Right>. about this. <laughs> and I just sort of shut down and went, no, we don't. Right. If you're interested in stuff, you can Google it. Yeah. You can follow a couple of Facebook pages. Mm -hmm. You'll see what's going on. You know, I, I think we've got a sort of... Maintain our target a little bit. Right. Which is just, you know, the baller shit. We only do fun stuff. Yeah, I totally agree <laughs> with that. Yeah. Yeah, I do love all the fun stuff going on lately. Grand Teton Mall for the past couple of weeks has been where it's at. Right, especially in the parking lot. <laughs> yes. How was Paranormal Cirque 2? Oh, so much better than last year. Because I, and I think we gave it a decent review last year. Right. I when mean, they were here, but I, it I was still had like, cool tricks. Yeah. I, I was like, eh, you know, you you could see the same thing on the street here in Idaho Falls. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, it didn't feel as um, exciting. Yeah. This one, I feel like they had a lot more showmanship, especially with the transitional scenes in between the um, big stunts. Okay, yeah, the sort of jester entertainers. Yes. So I feel like last time they tried to stick a little bit more scary. And the thing about scary things on stage is it's really hard to be scary. You know, I actually think that that's why um, horror movies are so impressive because it's so hard to really achieve that level of like actual actual terror. Uh -huh. Like you can get a good jump scare in no matter how like any any buffoon can get a good jump scare in. Right. You know, but like true horror is really hard to get. And it was really hard from last year. But this year, they actually, with, with more of a comedic take, which I really enjoyed, they did this, like, faux ghost hunters thing for some of it, and they did, like, a little game show. It was super cute. And the two guys that they had as the sort of, like, uh, jester duo were just, they were really into it. They were, they just sold it. There was one point where they were doing this vampire bit, and uh, one was wearing fake teeth, and it fell out <laughs> right onto the stage. <laughs> and it was kind of funny, because he broke character. He broke the fourth wall. He talked directly to the audience. It was like this fake game show thing they were doing. He was a vampire. He dropped his things. And he ended up being like... Oh, my vampire dentures. <laughs> he said something like, um, well, this is probably going to get me addicted to meth, but I better put these back in. And he just sort of rubbed them on his clothes and stuck them back in. <laughs> and honestly, the dedication was very impressive yeah. in that moment. Yeah, Five second rule. <laughs> right. Um, they also had one of those transitions where they threw a bunch of huge bouncy balls into the crowd. And that was really fun because they were painted like eyeballs. Oh, cute. Yeah. All it right. was really fun and cutely themed. Uh, I felt like the stunts were really impressive this year. And I know last year they had a malfunction with the finale. Uh, this year they did not. Okay. Which was cool. All right. Um, there was only one that I wasn't super impressed by, and that's the hair stunt. 
I get it. I think it's I think it's impressive. It's an impressive feat in and of itself. And once you're up there and hanging by your hair, there's just not a lot you can do. Right. You know, Except. like she can do like a running man. I know she did like a Buddha <laughs> pose. And yeah. It's <laughs> yeah. You yeah. You get it after the first couple seconds. Like, ow. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. All right. But the rest was really impressive. I thought the the performers did a great job. Um I would totally go to it again after this one. Okay. And the second thing that's in the Grand Teton Mall parking lot, but it's over now. I think mm-hmm. unless unless they pull the, by popular demand, we've extended <laughs> it for one more week. Right. The 20 ribeyes for $40, people. And they might. They might. Yeah. So, so they're there for like a limited time only one week or one weekend, one long weekend. Mm-hmm. I kind of have a feeling they won't because I did have to do a remote for it this mm-hmm. last weekend. And it sounded like it was Which sort is of, radio terminology for live remote broadcast. Right. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, and it sounds like it was sort of thrown together at the last second because they knew he was going to okay. All right. skadoodle, but we'll see. And let's see, you you actually brought, this is really cool. I this did. Is a, the first I got time, the deal. <laughs> yeah. You got the 20 ribeyes for $40. Mm-hmm. Here they are. Yeah. And look- I've spent the last couple episodes just bagging on anything and everything. <laughs> so we're just going to show these to you. Yeah. Here's the shot. We weighed them. They're all about mm-hmm. three and a half ounces. Yeah. They're palm-sized steaks. And on your hand. And yeah, I think it would be generous to say that they are about thicker a than a pinky finger. Yeah. A pinky finger the long way. Right. Or the... Wide way. <laughs> what am I trying to say? I know what you mean. Let me hold that up to the camera. But yeah. yeah. Now. That's what you get. I will say, like, the guy running the truck was super nice. So I'm not trying to bag on anyone. And realistically, I think that this meat totally has its place. You know, we actually fried some up. The flavor the flavor was good. They tasted great, you the, know? The texture wasn't my favorite, but also I've been so spoiled. You are so it's spoiled. A, it's probably an unfair comparison to mm-hmm. compare these to Virgin Riverland and Cattle Company steaks. Right. Well, and I will say the bigger boxes of meat that they had did uh-huh. look really good. I saw some of their fillets and they were really generous. Looking. Okay. So, you know, if you're going for the deal, it might not to be as good of a deal as you think you're going to get. But honestly, I think that the boxes probably could come out to be a pretty good deal. You know, I don't get upset by walking into a place like this and going, that's what they are. Mm -hmm. That's the 20 ribeyes for $40. That's what you've been advertising, huh? (laughs) I don't know why I went De Niro there, but (laughs) that was really bad. It was. (laughs) I'm I'm walking in. Um, (laughs) Don't try to redeem it. (laughs) um, All right, let's pull that back in. (laughs) Um, slurp it up like a noodle (laughs) but i get upset at the people who get upset right i agree with that i I just want to say what'd you expect Mm -hmm. so anyway they're good for tacos they're good for uh yeah i was gonna say i think these would be perfect if you're like making steak and eggs yeah you know or anything else where you'd want thinly cut steak yeah you know i think that's perfect all right you know okay it is what it is right which is also bad an expression that i hate Specifically, what it, people should say when they want to say that is, I accept it for what it is. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. Third thing in the Grand Teton Mall parking lot, Monster Bounce. Which I still haven't gone to, and I want to go so bad. What did we hear last year from people? You will realize after <laughs> about 10, 15 minutes that you are completely out of shape. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You'll Which be I sore totally for expect. a couple of days. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'll take some ibuprofen. I'll be fine. All right. You know, I'll Let's wear put some sneakers. They're there till when? August something. August 10th. August 10th. Yeah, which is pretty good, I think. Okay. With how hot it's been, I do kind of wonder if their attendance has been down a little bit. Right. And... If it, whether or not it has or hasn't, I definitely would encourage people to make sure to take as many steps as possible against chafing, because I feel like an activity like that is just asking for some thor- some sore thighs. That's hard to say. Thor- 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 thighs. <laughs> thor- thighs. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I used to. Have- you know, I, I used to have a lisp as a kid. So, <laughs> Did you really? Yeah, sometimes it just pops out. But the biggest news that I wanted to talk about about the Grand Teton Mall is they're turning forty. How wild is that, by the way? I remember when that was a field. (laughs) Yeah, right? Every Idahoan ever. (laughs) I remember when Sunnyside was the edge of town. Mm Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think that Ermac and Grand Teton Mall were both built about the same time. 
Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, Grand Teton Mall opened in 1984. and Ooh, if Right during the mall boom. Uh-huh. And if you're feeling nostalgic, it, I think for the last six months, maybe even year, mm-hmm. they've been posting every Throwback Thursday, they've been posting some, unfortunately, their cell phone shots of actual photos. Oh, of the mall. So there's weird glare and stuff the way they're taking them. But that will definitely stimulate some memories. Oh, cool. Find them on Facebook. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's a far cry from what it was then. Right. Speaking of nostalgia and 80s and maybe, say, Mm -hmm. 90s, are you ready for this episode's weird treat? thing i don't even know what to call it i think i am oh okay yes this is the thing i was thinking about okay and i didn't know what to call it or what it was here we go (gasps) oh hell yeah we each get our own can (laughs) anybody recognize this (laughs) when i was a kid my uncle would get this for us sometimes and it was my favorite little treat but check it out with your special eyes and and it's we'll show you a photo here okay took a photo in the test kitchen before bringing them into the studio can you see the year on here? I'm looking for it. Oh. Top of the can, sort of sideways. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is King <laughs> Bee Jerky Stuff from <laughs> 1997. Yeah. So it is... Well, and it even says sell by then, so... <laughs> 27 years old. Yeah, it may have been 95. Well, yeah, probably when it was first I don't know what the shelf sold. life on this stuff is. This thing very well could be older than me. It could be. Yeah. Yeah. Which is sort of a fascinating idea. So let's play the exciting game. Will they eat it? Yeah. (laughs) I'm gonna. I don't know. Are you serious? Uh, You're that gung ho. Oh, hell yeah. I mean, realistically, dude. I have to work tomorrow. (laughs) Right. Yeah. I have stuff to do. If your gut's fucked up, you're going to be, you're just going to be boned. (laughs) Sorry, dude. All right. I got a party to go to. You got to do the fingernails kind of. Which, yeah, I don't have, it. I have really brittle nails that you desperately need a manicure. Oh, no, I got, I, you got it. I was so excited. I pried it open. Wow. <laughs> wow. You're an animal. Okay. It smells like fish food. Okay. Like, you know, when you go to feed your fish, your little gold Ooh, fishies. Yeah. It's a little fishy. Yeah. So if you, if you're not it. familiar, King B is now, you know, the hero arena at the Mountain America yes. credit union mm-hmm. center thing. So uh, King B basically is hero meat snacks now, mm-hmm. right? It was right. Same on. I don't know why he dissolved it or whatever, but um, jerky stuff was. It's it's basically everything from the jerky cutting room floor. I'm assuming. Yeah, basically. And somebody had the bright idea to like, hey, let's put it in a can and make it look like chew. Yeah. Yeah, well, and as a kid, dude, I was so into that. I don't know. Okay, that's definitely a thing that's not as common now, especially because, like, now Chaw. kids would be, like, vaping candy if, right. if they were trying to. Um, I saw some big league chew in the grocery store today. Oh, yeah, Remember I've that? seen that recently. Yeah. Oh, I loved that stuff. But, yeah, I feel like as a kid, a lot of candy was, like, meant to look like your parents' vices. Mm-hmm. You know, like, you had, like, the... Candy cigarettes. Yeah, the candy cigarettes or, like, the little bottles that I guess were soda, but they were kind of beer bottles. Okay, yeah. You know, that kind of thing. You're right, really going to do it, huh? I am going to yeah. do it. There's two kinds of people. Like, at this point, we're just eating sodium and preservatives. Oh, yeah. I bet this has so much so much MSG in it. 30-year-old. You know? I don't know, man. It's not that bad. I think this is a mistake. You can get them off of eBay for five bucks a can. Wow. So this was a really extravagant $15 purchase. <laughs> Two cans and $5 shipping. Right. You know, I do sort of wonder if we do get sick, if they would be liable for selling it. Right. Because I know that a lot of grocery stores can't sell it because you're liable for it. I wonder what the disclaimer on the, I didn't check. I just yeah. clicked. But I mean, like the buy. whole point of jerky was that it's meant to preserve meat so that you can eat it like when you can't readily get it. Right. Like that's why it was ever developed. I guess we should have Googled before this. Can I eat 25 year old jerky? Oh, now you're doing my technique, the sticking the tongue in and. Just right. Well, yeah, because then I had a little residue on my fingers, and I don't like sticking right. hands. No, me neither. Mm. Okay, well. I mean, I went in for more, so I think we're good. I did just to do it, but I regret it. Mm-hmm. 
Now, that being said, you know that Jack Links makes something just like this that That's, is readily available now. I think I've seen that. <laughs> yeah. I've seen it at Country Corner. I wonder how much of this is sawdust. <laughs> Right, right. Did they mix it with? Well, just because you know they're allowed to put so and so much sawdust in your food. We like, can talk shit about a twenty-seven-year-old product now. Right? I mean, yeah, too soon. Too considering soon. Considering the brand is literally defunct, I think we're fine. Right. You know, it just changed into Hero, but overall, okay. I was talking to. I finished the can. Friend of, would you? I would. would you really? Here, then I'm going to give you mine. <laughs> you crazy person. I was talking to a friend of the show, Greg, uh-huh. who uh, gifted me that Idaho Falls A's tee. Oh, yeah, the really wore. cool one. I love that one. A bunch of episodes back. He's playing with his 90s alternative band in Provo tonight or oh, Salt Lake or somewhere. <laughs> and um, he's like, hey, dude, let's do a shirt for shirt swap. I'm like, great. I love that. So I forgot which one I'm going to send him, but he's going to put that on a t shirt. Oh, really? Yeah, the King oh, I like Bee. I that. Hey, is it time to sell your home? Make your move with Mike Helps Idaho. For over five years, I've been helping Idaho with real estate, buying, selling, investing. And now I'm joined by Carly Morgan so we can help you even more. You know us for telling it like it is on this show. We do the same thing when it comes to selling your home. And we're backed and brokered by the best. Keller Williams Realty East Idaho. And I donate $100 at closing of my own money to a charity of your choice. So make your move with Mike Helps Idaho, link in post. Have you experienced locally raised beef? Mm-hmm. Virgin River Land and Cattle Company sources local Angus fed on green Idaho pastures for a rich beef flavor. I saw right now they've got a great deal on ground beef. Make some burgers and enjoy some summer grilling. You can taste the quality in the ground beef that comes from one local cow for the same price as hamburger in the store. Find them on Facebook, search for Virgin River Land and Cattle Company, and use promo code IFAF to save 15% on locally raised beef. Are you going thrifting? Make sure to visit Elsie's Closet Upscale Resale, trendy fashion that's budget-friendly. Elsie's Closet is Idaho Falls' only thrift store devoted exclusively to women and women's fashion. Right now, they have everything for summer. Shorts, skirts, dresses, crop tops, and tanks. It's not just a stop at the thrift. It's a whole vibe. Look for the pink sign just off Yellowstone on A Street and use promo code IFAF to save 15% off your total purchase at Elsie's Closet. Have you ever heard of Candy Salad? Guests bring a big bag of their favorite candy, then everyone at your event can mix together their favorites to make a delicious candy salad. DIY Wedding and Event Rentals has so many fun containers to display the candy. It's an amazing treat and just another cute idea from DIY Wedding and Event Rentals. Call or text 208-403-2040 today. That's 208 208- 403-2040 and use promo code IFAF to save 15% off all your rentals. Our friends at Roof Rescue are doing something cool in celebration of their 10th anniversary. They're giving away four free roofs to people who make a significant impact right here in our community. Know someone like this? Nominate them for a new roof today. Link in post. Maybe it's a veteran or a member of the military, a first responder, teacher, or anyone that deserves it. You can also call your local Roof Rescue in Idaho Falls, Twin Falls, and Logan Lincoln Post. Roof Rescue, providing watertight peace of mind. Have family or friends visiting you in Idaho this summer? Send them home with the best souvenir, a unique t-shirt from Teton T-Shirts. Yeah, if the Idaho Falls tourist tees at local gift shops, just don't do it for you. Go take a look at Teton T-Shirts. Link and post. Enjoy a real piece of Idaho designed right here by me, Mike Nelson, the genius mind behind this show. (laughs) (laughs) Ooh, I like that little montage of t-shirt designs from Teton T-Shirts. Yeah, unfortunately, a lot of them are IFAF logo parodies. (laughs) Right. Uh, Like this one. Can you guess, kids, (laughs) what this one is? Probably not because they like the good sugary cereal, not that Hint, crap. <laughs> Mikey likes it. <laughs> it's life cereal. Yeah. Life cereal is fine. <laughs> you know, as an adult, I actually do like it. As a kid, I was like, mm, this sucks. Right. Because I wanted like, you know, marshmallows and like tricks and stuff like that, you know? Hey, a real quick pet paw PSA. Check out this video. Mm-hmm. This person is using one of those guns that reads the temperature from the surface that it's pointed at. Right, yeah. Looks like she's pointing it at asphalt. It comes up to 159 degrees. 
Youch. That's hot. See, that's why you got to teach your dogs how to walk in those little socks. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. yeah. Now, or, my dog won't do that, but he's also a chihuahua, so I can just pick him up. Yeah, keep him <laughs> on the grass. Mm -hmm. uh, and then this sign that talks about how when the air temp outside is 77, the asphalt can be 125 degrees. Wow. When it's 87, feels like 143, or it can be actually mm -hmm. 143 degrees. At 125 Wild. degrees, skin destruction can occur in just 60 seconds. Wow. Yes. I remember one time um, I had a cat, a curious cat, walk mm -hmm. across the stove. Mm. And, and this was like an hour after dinner. Mm -hmm. But uh, poor guy burned his paws. No, poor little baby. Because the stove had been on. And so mm -hmm. for like a month afterwards, we're still rubbing like... Oh. It's, it's tough because, you know, you want to ease its pain... Mm -hmm. And put like Vaseline or melted chapstick from your glove box on there. Okay, weirdly But then enough. you've got weird paw prints all over your house. <laughs> right, right. Just watch your pets on that asphalt. See, at that point, you got to do the granny method where you put the lotion on and then you also put on socks. There you go. Yeah. Uh, here's a weird one. If you do end up with a burn, Vagisil is actually really good for alleviating the burning sensation. Vagil what? Vagisil. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, like I remember as a kid, I burnt myself on a hot glue gun as I was like crafting with my aunt or something. Uh -huh. And my mom's friend was like, yeah, put some Vagisil on it. So we went out, we bought some, put it on, and I applied that for like two days straight, and it was the best. Just, it was the only thing that helped. I just watched a South Park episode <laughs> where, was it Cartman who yes, took a bunch of Cartman Vagisil? Yes, it was Cartman who wanted to, he ate Vagisil so he could be stupid and poor enough to drive a NASCAR. <laughs> Obviously, none of our views are shared there. I'm just saying what happened in the episode. Yeah. It is kind of cool to watch a show that's been on since, what, 97? Yeah, it's been on for a long time. And it's 26th season, but it's kind of cool to go, oh, that's when, uh, that was the Kanye Fish Sticks episode. Mm -hmm. That was the... That was when that thing happened. That right. was, you know, it, it's just, it's sort of a trip through history. And I got to tell you, no matter your feelings on South Park, it is brilliant. <laughs> Not just kind of funny, brilliant satire. Yeah. Cutting to the core. I think sometimes they could tighten up the jokes a little and make them less fart-based. Sure, but, sure. But overall, you know, when I was younger and I didn't really understand the nuance as much, I thought it was really stupid. As I'm a little older and I understand where they're coming from and what they're actually saying, I actually do think it's it's pretty funny. Now, I've got a PSA. All right. Have you heard of the Pure Hope Hygiene Pantry? I have not. So, yeah, basically it's a pantry that anyone can go to and, you know, take the hygiene products that they need, which makes a lot of sense because, you know, we've got food pantries and stuff like that, but a lot of programs don't account for hygiene products and it's nuts how expensive some of those can be. Sure. There's that pink tax, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Where feminine products especially are sold at a premium. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I know a lot of schools have been doing that for what? Five, 10 years now? Doing what exactly? Like, like giving oh, away yeah, giving hygiene away, products mm -hmm. if they're needed. Oh, I, I feel like that's been since schools were a thing. Oh, okay. You know, like teachers spend so much time with their students. They understand their home life, I think, better than a lot of other adults, you know? And frankly, there are kids who aren't getting what they need because either their parents can't afford it or they don't realize their kid needs it and don't do anything about it. Um, but, you know, you walk into one middle school classroom and you know exactly who needs what. <laughs> right. Yeah. Middle <laughs> they schools. They get stinky. <laughs> they're interesting because <laughs> kids are becoming adults. They're mm -hmm. sort of in the in, in between land there. Right. And yeah, they elementary schools smell like pencil shavings and tater tots mm -hmm. and orange peels, mm -hmm. whereas middle schools smell like kid bo. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I imagine the teachers have some olfactory fatigue, like <laughs> probably. farmers and ranchers get. Yeah, from right. the scent. <laughs> right, but yeah, my mom's a, a school counselor, so I know that she gives away a ton of like hygiene products just to the kids that need it. Okay. Um, so this is kind of a nice option because it's going to help alleviate some of that in the school system. And it's it's also going to be more widely available to people who are not in school anymore or who just need it this one month to get by and stuff like that. Right. Do you have to be on any sort of special state assistance? Do they check IDs or whatever? Or? It doesn't. Well, you know what? I'm not super sure. It doesn't look like they do. Okay. So that might be a better question posed for them. Okay. Um, 
but it seems like it's a pretty, you know, no questions asked, asked, go in, get what you need facility. Probably can't do like a shopping spree type, <laughs> right? Swipe things into your basket, but no, there's. I probably, wonder if there's like a limit per person limit per, per person. week or something. Yeah, yeah. and but, where is it? Uh, it's on Ammon Road, uh, just before Highway 26, south of Beaches Corner. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. And there again, it's free. Yeah, like you don't pay them money. Yeah, you just go and pick up what you need to pick up. Mm-hmm. What a cool concept! I know. Yeah, it's nice. Well, you know, you've got food banks. It's nice to have a hygiene bank. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, and as someone who's had to get hygiene products for people before, like, it can be really hard to find that stuff. It shouldn't be, you'd think. But, like, you know, you, uh, I know that the men's shelter, um, what's that called again? Yeah, the Idaho Falls Rescue Mission, Thank you. I believe. Yeah, I know that the Idaho Falls Rescue Mission will do... Todd Wood, <laughs> what's up? I know that they'll do hygiene uh, packs, but you can only get one a month per person. Okay. Um, which, realistically, the stuff that they have in there is full size, and it should last more than a month unless you're being, you know, really reckless with it, which usually people aren't. So it's not too bad, but, you know, stuff like that can be a little harder to get your hands on. So knowing that there are two locations now that you can get stuff like that here in town is really useful. And I wonder if they accept like donations. I'm sure they do, right? Of cash or goods. I'd have to imagine. Yeah. yeah. And did you say they only let in one person at a time? That's what I saw on their website. So okay. I don't know if that's entirely true. I would assume if you're like part of a couple, they'll probably let you both in. Sure. But you know, just so that you have a little privacy while you're grabbing what you need, which I think is really nice. I mean, personal hygiene is kind of private. Yeah. Right? One could even say it's personal. So, Pure Hope Hygiene <laughs> Pantry, that's why you're IFAF this week. Mm -hmm. Chris Pie 5, whoosh, 21 pew Finger pew. Gun Salute, and Chef's Kiss. To you. Thanks for doing what you're doing. Hit them up if you want to contribute. Perfect for the next time your mother-in-law gives you a scent of something that you're allergic to. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. One more PSA coming up August 10th. It's the Great Snake River Greenbelt. Oh, City of Idaho Falls. Jump on them. Jump on the Rotary <laughs> Club and have them change it to Riverwalk. Greenbelt Duck Race. <laughs> we were reminded of this when we were at the Idaho Falls Farmer's Market in Ammon on Wednesday mm -hmm. nights through August, right? Uh -huh. Regular Farmer's Market is May through October. Idaho Falls Farmer's Market Wednesday nights in Ammon is June through August. Mm -hmm. Anyway, you got to get your ducks for five bucks a piece. And then what? August what? It's the 33rd. August 10th. August 10th. Mm -hmm. The night before, they usually do a classic car show. Right. Mm -hmm. And then usually across the river, like the, everybody's going to be at the river that day. Right. Uh, usually across the river, um, the uh, the Rotary Club that puts on the duck race, they're on the west side. On the east side, oftentimes it's the Idaho Falls Arts Council Roaring Youth Jam. Oh, right. Uh-huh. With like a battle of the bands and stuff. Right. So it's like a whole day. It's a whole weekend of it. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. And what a great time to do it, you know, right in the middle of the summer mm -hmm. when things are su sunshiny and pretty outside. I'm excited, personally. There's a link in post. We'll talk about the prizes as we get closer. In fact, mm -hmm. I think we may have already mentioned it the minute we did get the information. Right. In a previous show. We'll talk about it as we get closer. But now's mm -hmm. the time, link in post, to adopt a duck. I love that they say adopt a duck, too. I think that's super yeah. cute. <laughs> Five bucks a duck, 25 bucks for a six quack. <laughs> <laughs> Cute. So we went to the Renaissance Fair. Is this the first ever? No. So they actually had one the year before, but we couldn't go because we had just gotten back from Disneyland. Okay. And we were pooped. And the crummy thing is we were kind of pooped this week, this time that we went too, so we didn't stay very long. We literally went an hour before it closed. Right. Yeah, I bought like two things. I bought a pen that's shaped like a sword. It's really cool, actually. And I love that it's like the really skinny uh, gel pen nib that I like. Uh -huh. um, and then I also got one of those little uh, belly dancer uh, scarves because I think they're super cute. And it had lots of jingly little coins and it seemed fun. <laughs> <laughs> if you have people in your family that are into that sort of thing. And if not, you know what? If you want to introduce them into a little bit of like lightness, fantasy, and... Uh, LARPing. Yeah, and LARPing. <laughs> Take them on down. Well, yeah. I guess this next week it won't be there, but last week was the last weekend of it. Right. So there, was it two weeks long? Three. Was, three? It was mm -hmm. three weeks long? I know, right? Okay. But they had the vendors. They had the merch. I saw a buddy of mine on Facebook 
got a dwarf axe. Oh, cool. They had a like put your own weapons together booth. Oh, that's cool. But yeah, I have to yeah, say. We I, didn't see hardly anything. We were so in and out. They had the merch. They had the vendors. You know, they had all mm-hmm. sorts of like jewelry and art. And, yeah, and little shows. Right. Little mm-hmm. shows. Here's some knights knocking each other out. <laughs> We'll try to be a little bit more ahead of that next year. And, and spend a little more time there. Yeah, remind you about it. I didn't even have time to, to put together a proper costume. Oh, yeah. What would you have been? I probably would have gone as a fairy. I actually went looking for fairy <laughs> wings, but I couldn't find any. Fairy. Yeah. Well, okay. When I was a kid, I played Titania in um, Midsummer Night's Dream in like seventh grade. Right. And my aunt had these really rad fairy wings that went down the back of your costume. So they looked more realistic. And I, I even called her up and I was like, hey, do you still have those? And she's like, yeah, but they're buried. There's no way I'm getting them, getting them out today. <laughs> and I was like, well, snap. <laughs> <laughs> so I wish I would have called sooner and gotten something together. But, you know, I just were some close enough that I was like, all right, this is fine. <laughs> I do love the fact that we have a Renaissance fair here. Me too. Well, I mean, technically in Rexburg. Yeah, well, but, you, I know, mean, you know, kind here. of in Rigby. Yeah. Kind of like halfway. Yeah. Close enough. Great place for it. You know? Right. You right. kind of feel like you're out in the, in the, the forest. forest a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Have to avoid Mon- the fay. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, Ammon Farmers, or sorry, Idaho Falls Farmers Market in Ammon. Let's go back to that for just a second. Oh, yeah. We want to show you this config. So here I am at the corner. It's basically like an L. Mm -hmm. It's just two streets Mm -hmm. at a 90 degree angle. And it's honestly, it was because we both live on the east side. Yeah, it's really convenient. So it was so nice and convenient. And sometimes, yeah, you Mm -hmm. would rather go on a weeknight in this case, Wednesday nights through August, Mm -hmm. then, you know, take up some, a block of time on a Saturday. We specifically went there just to get dinner. Yeah. You know? Yep. (laughs) And it was perfect for that, especially because then, you know, if you guys are both feeling something different, you can go to two different booths. We thankfully weren't. We just went to the same. Uh, We actually went to that um, Sabor de Mi Corazon, the taco truck. Yes. It was pretty good. You had those keto tacos. Uh Uh-huh. And you had the carne asada fries like you do. I love carne asada fries. If it's on the menu, Carly will get it. They're just good. But the keto tacos were kind of fun. The taco shell was just cheese. Yeah, which I love cheese. Yeah. Like, honestly, I was a little jealous of yours, but Mm -hmm. like not enough to trade because mine was really good. Also, their habanero salsa. Yeah. Delightful. Great. Delightful. I wish I could have um, taken a little extra home with me. Honestly, it was so good. So thanks, Ammon, for hosting that. You know, there really is only, I don't want to say one thing in Ammon. Ammon has plenty. Sure. They've got half of what's on hit. Yeah, right. <laughs> They've got McCowan Park and they do everything there. And Ammon Days is coming up. We'll probably talk it up. Oh, I'm so excited for that. Next episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it's August 2nd and 3rd. <laughs> but it's not this weekend, but next Right. I want to say. And we really want to try to make it to the balloon lighting thing that they do on a Friday night. Okay. You know how entangled Rapunzel like always wants to go to see the floating lights? Yeah. That's kind of how I feel about that. <laughs> you mentioned Disneyland earlier. Did you know that this year is their 69th anniversary? Nice. Nice. <laughs> and they spell out. I, a lot of the signs I've seen, they actually spell it out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure if you can steal it from the park, it's spelled out. That's hilarious. Not, it doesn't have the numbers. Yeah. I did see a Tinkerbell pin that had the numbers, though. Oh, okay. And hilarious. I kind of want that. <laughs> I kind of want see it. Why. You know what? If someone wants to <laughs> give Mike their 69th cute. Tinkerbell pin, it's he just, would like it. <laughs> it's just kind of cute. It is cute. That if anybody's cute. going to the park, I'll take two. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> Did you hear about that uh, LDS missionary who got a little big for his britches with uh, Post Malone? No. (laughs) Yeah. So apparently they were both in the uh, Salt Lake City airport. Okay. And this missionary went up and was like, hey, Posty, you want to book a Mormon? (laughs) And gave it to him and it made it to news for some reason. Wow. (laughs) Just saying. Uh, But yeah, I thought it was kind of funny. And and also, like, I bet that Mormon missionary has such high hopes. (laughs) <laughs> right. You know, like that's like, I'm the, thing. the one who converted Posty. <laughs> right. And I believe he's got a show coming up in West Valley, Utah at the USANA Amphitheater. He does. He does. Uh, in August. And then uh, an album dropping his big country, Beyonce country crossover album. Right. Which is super exciting. In September. Huh. You know, it's kind of funny. I feel like the nicest people in music are the ones with lots of face tattoos. 
Because <laughs> okay. it's like Jelly Roll and Posty. They seem. You know? to, they do seem to be awfully nice people Dude, in jelly, all the interviews. Jelly Roll is a cinnamon roll. Yeah, <laughs> he's so sweet. Every time I read an article about him, it always makes me like him more. Then why don't you call him a sweet roll? <laughs> he is a sweet roll. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, cinnamon roll's a an internet term. You've heard that? Before, no, right? what? Oh, really? Teach me. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, it's like um internet slang for like someone who's just like golden retriever en- energy, just like really sweet, really thoughtful, just you know a good pure person. Okay, I'm gonna have to use you know? that. He's got that one. Um, documentary on hulu that i've been dying to watch yes yeah, save see me that. yeah i remember when it came out i was like who's jelly roll and why do i have to save him right right but that but then i heard this song and i was like oh hell yeah brother yeah well and his whole thing basically is that he was kind of a hoodlum as a kid and young adult and he you know went to prison and reformed himself and he was like this isn't who i want to be i want to make the world a better place he pursued music he made it and, you know, now he's kind of turning around trying to make things better for everyone else, too. Everybody loves a good redemption art. Oh, yeah, right? <laughs> Speaking of Mormon missionaries, have you seen the trailer for the new Hugh Grant movie, Heretic? What? Yeah. <gasps> Tell me about this. First off, I love Hugh Grant. Oh, man. <laughs> Would you like to see him play a psychopath? Oh. Yeah. Can he? I mean, he's like so so, Sweet and charming. He's I, just a baby. <laughs> I know you don't like watching trailers. I don't. But can I describe the trailer to you? With no spoilers? With no spoilers. Then I yes. I don't think. But I, I'm at least going to outline the plot for you. Do it vaguely. Two sister Mormon missionaries uh-huh. visit a home. The home of Hugh Grant's character. Okay. And they say, would you like to hear about the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints? And he says, sure. And they say, now, we're uh, not allowed to enter a home unless there's a woman, you know, with a man in it, unless there's a woman in the home. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, my wife is baking a blueberry pie. Come on in. Oh. So. There was no wife baking a blueberry pie, was there? (laughs) There was a scented blueberry pie candle. Oh, well, that's something at least. Next thing you know, they're locked in a room and he's giving them a choice of, I don't know, faith versus n- disbelief. Oh, okay. Or something in what what seems like a sort of sadistic jigsaw type situation. Okay. I know exactly how this movie came to be. Okay. Some guy, some screenwriter, maybe a gal, I don't know, sitting in their house, got a knock on the door from, from the Mormon <laughs> missionaries, and they've come up with the scenario, either because they were pissed and they were in the middle of something that they were enjoying and they didn't want to deal with this crap, <laughs> and they were like, I wish I could get them to stop it. How would I get them to stop it? Well, it'd be like this. Or they were like, oh, I hope they're okay. Like, that seems really dangerous. They should really watch out for crap like this. I'm sure it was <laughs> one of those two things, but it looks interesting it drops November 15th. I'll go see it. I haven't been able to determine a rating on it yet. Interesting. So I wonder. It might not be rated yet. I don't think it's rated yet. I don't know if it's going to be PG 13 or rated R, but that'll be an interesting conundrum, won't it? That will be. I'm, for, I'm down. For our LDS friends wondering whether <laughs> or not to see this movie, I kinda this rated it, R movie. I kind of wonder if it's even going to come to this area. Oh, sure it will. If the Book of Mormon can play in Salt Lake City. Right. Well, yeah, but they've got so much, like, they've got the counterculture down there. Yeah. You know? Anyway, seems like an interesting concept for a movie, and I'll be, not first in line, but uh, maybe not opening weekend. I'll go see it. Yeah, I want to see it. Yeah. You know, we love our Rexburg food. We love crispy (sighs) cones. Uh huh, curry pizza. Curry pizza. Uh, You know what? I'm really craving that. We might have to get that in the next couple of days. (laughs) So good. It's so good. Please come to Idaho Falls, please. They really, you know what? They need to get into that strip mall over by Honey Baked Ham. Yeah, where it's sort of a mini Rexburg. Yeah, with the little bubble of. Yeah. Wouldn't that be cute? So there's an ice cream. Oh, we would eat there every day. (laughs) We would. It'd be so bad. We would give so much money to Curry Pizza if they were here. (laughs) There's an ice cream store coming to Rexburg. And I'm not sure what, I don't know how I know people. Mm-hmm. Because I've had so many lifetimes here and outside of here, uh-huh. high school, radio, real estate. So um, one Jared Gold on my Facebook friends list, and I believe he's a high school buddy, mm-hmm. so I should message him, really. 
but he keeps posting some hype about Sugar Beast. Ooh. Coming to Rexburg July 25th, the Sugar Beast produces American style ice cream in giant rock salt and ice churns. This oh, technology, cool. yeah, has been around since um, the Victorian period mm -hmm. and elevates cream, milk, and sugar to sublime heights. Ooh, that sounds nice. Sounds fabulous. I will say, I think go. it's sort of a brave move to go with the name Sugar Beast when, like, everyone else is, like, you know, going kind of the opposite. Like, oh, we're, like, no trans fats. We're no sugar. Yeah. You know, this is made out of a fart from a butterfly. Even <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, it's it's always, like, really healthy eyes. Yes, right, yeah. yeah. When they started calling burgers sandwiches, I was just like, oh, come on. Right, right. Just call it a burger. Yeah. But, and, and even I am like sugar is poison. Right. It is. But I like to pick my poison. Right. <laughs> Here's the thing. I try to avoid it as much as possible. I'm not here for a long time. I'm here for a good time. That's right. And that means a little bit of sugar. Mama likes her macarons. <laughs> I'm not giving them up. I'd like to see someone pry them out of my cold, dead hands. So maybe visit <laughs> Rexburg this weekend and check out the sugar beast. Looks like old-fashioned ice cream, just like, like Grandma used to make. I love ice cream. It's yeah. one of my favorites. <laughs> is Rigby Lake clean? That was a question asked <laughs> this week. I mean... You ever swam in Rigby Lake? I hope it is, because I have, and I like it. I okay. Think it's, I think it's a cute little lake. Any adverse effects? None that I noticed, but I, it was also a long time ago. I think it was like right, right out of high school. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, sometime in the 90s. Yeah. I swam in there. Uh-huh. Well, that was a question that somebody asked, and all sorts, like 250 comments. Mm -hmm. Rigby Lake, a.k.a. Jefferson Lake, mm -hmm. a.k.a. AIDS Lake, <laughs> somebody oh, said. No. <laughs> but no, there are plenty of locals saying, oh, just enjoy it. It's beautiful. It's just a beautiful place. Just go. I don't think that's the right answer. But I do think the right answer was one that I saw several times, which was, I've been going for years, and I'm fine. Right. But a lot of people talking about unspeakable personal hygiene products oh. around the lake, um, I guess leeches, and a lot of people talking about swimmer's itch, oh. which is a particular parasite or whatever. Oh, yuck. Anyway, some dude posted a link to the DEQ, which I believe is the Department of Environmental Quality. I looked it up and found Nothing. <laughs> not the, absolutely nothing so thanks for that useless rabbit hole oh but i did see as i was looking at it i did see that it feeds from something called the great feeder canal oh which of course comes right off the snake river uh-huh and i guess the i would assume the great feeder canal feeds mm -hmm. other canals one would assume one would assume yeah but it just sort of diverts a little bit of water mm -hmm. fills up the lake I don't know. They open a gate or whatever. A little dam? Yeah. But I... When it's used for water, it's called a dam, kids. <laughs> I know back when I drank hose water, <laughs> right. I visited Rigby Lake a couple times, didn't have any issues. Right. But yeah, it was a really mixed response. So we would love to hear your feedback and see huh. your comments. Any problems with Rigby Lake? Now, by personal hygiene products scattered around it, are we talking... Diapers, needles, douches, or condoms. Uh, and feminine hygiene products. Oh, tampons yeah. and pads? So I think all of the above. Yuck. Yeah. <laughs> well, people are horrible. Yeah, people, people are, are horrible, gross, disgusting, dude. terrible, no good. Yeah, I mean, at I'm least kidding. bury it like a cat, dude. Uh, yeah. <laughs> maybe they did. <laughs> I suppose maybe. But I don't think, like, um, there's any annual, like, cleanup in terms of bacteria, right? They... They no, open the not. gate, they fill it up, they close the gate, they let it sit for the summer. Yeah. That's what it looks like to me yeah, anyway. I mean, I, I'm assuming it sort of has its own natural biome. Yes. You know? Right. <laughs> Which That's could been be there a good thing or a bad thing. I don't hundreds know. Hundreds of years. <laughs> I mean, I... An old evil is unleashed. <laughs> Yeah. If Swimmer's I'm, itch, three. <laughs> if I'm going to go to a lake, it's usually going to be like Blacktail, maybe the Rexburg Lake. That one's kind of cute. And that a lot of people, uh, probably a third of the people suggested other alternatives yeah. too. And so just out of curiosity, I was like, well, wait a minute. What about Jensen's Lake in Blackfoot, the one you see right off of I-15? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That is just right off the Snake River. 
Oh, okay, nice. Um, in that there's no canal middleman. Right. And apparently, by the way, it's Jensen's Lake and mm-hmm. Jensen Grove. Oh. That's the park area around the lake. Okay, fair enough. But the one thing I noticed that's different in Blackfoot is the lake fills directly from the Snake River, you know, at the north end. Mm -hmm. And then at the southern end, there's also an outlet. So I believe it's true that a few times during the summer, Mm -hmm. they kind of let some water out and bring some fresh water in. Oh, that's nice. So that's the difference, I think. And I think Mm -hmm. Jensen's Lake is deeper than Rigby Lake, isn't it? That would make sense. I think so. Yeah. When you drive by Rigby Lake in the winter, it's it looks like it's only 20 feet deep, it's if like that. It's like a puddle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, jury's out, but um, go have your summer fun wherever you can, because we've got this string of 90 plus degree days. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. But I read this other article, too, that said 73.3% of Idaho lakes are too polluted to swim in. Yeah. That's awful. Is that sad or what? That's really sad. It's really sad. And it's well, especially not- especially because I feel like a lot of our nature is so well preserved. It's sort of shocking. That's what I would think too. Yeah. But there's like fertilizer runoff from golf courses. Right. And all sorts of other factors that I don't remember now. You know what? That's the thing. Golf courses are way too manicured. Yeah. It makes the game too easy. I'm not a golf enthusiast, so- Yeah, me either. I actually, I've literally said to you, you know what? I think I'd like to try golf before. Yes, you have. But that's the thing. I almost feel like we should very specifically not maintain golf greens and instead let them get a little wily mm-hmm. to make the game a little harder. Like they did back in the day in Scotland. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying, dude, like we're, we're playing the like prissy version of golf, you know? <laughs> Like, let's toughen up a little. Let's make the game hard. I think by now we've sort of standardized (laughs) it, and it would be tough to go back. It would be. And let's. Let's anyway. The world is chaos. Let's make everything chaos. Crazy lady coming through. (laughs) Plus, it would probably help some women get their husbands back, too. So there's another nice advantage to it. (laughs) (laughs) It's possible. Another post I saw this week that I couldn't find again when I tried to look for it, so I wonder if it got removed. Ooh, interesting. Because it was sort of smacked of spreading rumors. Oh. But the post claimed that apparently there's a lady on the numbered streets who is taking cats. <gasps> oh, I saw this one. You and did getting see them this. spayed and neutered. Getting them spayed and neutered and then mm-hmm. dropping them back off in the same place. Yeah. But uh, still with their stitches or whatever. Which, I mean... Honestly, what else are you going to do? Well, right. I mean, I suppose give it some time to recover first. Well, yeah, but there's, I mean, that's the thing with a lot of those, they're um, dissolvable stitches. So once they're in, there's not really anything else to do. Like A few people saying, hey, does anybody have any information on the lady on the numbered streets? Because I'd love to contribute financially. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You know what? Here's the thing. As someone who's seen way too many cats just get abandoned or not taken care of and stuff like that and just reproduce and reproduce until it's a problem. I think she's doing good work. I get it. And I understand that some people own those cats and like it's their property and stuff, but like, sure. I think in Idaho, a pet is your property, right? Right. But at the end of the day, if you're not going to be responsible with it and it's something that affects everybody, you know, like cats are incredible hunters. They can destroy entire ecosystems because they like to hunt them little birdies. They do. You know? and Squirrels. So, right. That's the thing. So if you're not going to be responsible and get your pet spayed or neutered or keep them inside if you choose not to spay or neuter them. Is this a, is this a Carly hot take? It's a hot take. Are you saying that that's I'm justified? And I she think should... it's justified because yeah. I'm so sick of seeing all these abandoned kittens and people not taking care of them and people not taking responsibility for their own actions. You know, you chose to not get your cat spayed or neutered, and now our shelters are overrun. We have to put pets down. You know, we don't have the fosters available to take care of all these cats. You make a compelling argument, that's for sure. Yeah. But the other discussion that I saw was, well, what's the numbered streets? Because there's... What do you think? Well, (laughs) Well, but there is some discussion about what constitutes... Sure, there are streets that are numbered. Right. But what constitutes the neighborhood known as the numbered streets? Okay, that's fair. I guess I would say everything under 17th. I would say, let me look at the map in my mind, everything between 1st and 17th Street and then 
west of Holmes, but east of Boulevard. Right. I That's agree. the numbered streets. Yeah. And they were saying it was happening sort of by Rose Hill Cemetery, which I'm not sure constitutes as the numbered streets. It's just outside of them, if that. And yeah. I know that those streets are numbered too. So I would call those the upper numbered streets. Sure, but I don't think you can live like near Woodruff on 12th Street and say, I live on the numbered streets. So what I described, 1st to 17th Mm -hmm. between Holmes and Boulevard, is what's called the Crows subdivision, the Crows edition. It was one of the first subdivisions in Idaho Falls. Makes sense. And so that's why I think people say, oh, well, anything other than that is not technically the numbered streets. Yeah, I would agree with that. Even though the street may begin with With a a number. number. Well, that flew by. That's our show. We want to leave you with this. You've probably seen the yellow cyber truck, Tesla cyber truck. I have. Uh huh. Parked in front of the new Romaine showroom at First and Hit. Which I still haven't been into, and I want to go in and see it so bad. It looks so cool. Especially at night. Mm-hmm. Now, I know that uh, for you expats and you out-of-towners that uh, listen to our show just to get the news from Lake Wobegon, <laughs> I know you're going to roll your eyes at this, but there's only a couple of cyber trucks in town. Mm-hmm. The yellow one belongs to Jake Heaton at Romaine's. I think he's the owner, right? Yeah. The forest green one belongs to that you're about to see belongs to a Robbie Woods. And I think Zach Martin, my buddy Zach, has one too. Oh. Don't ask me how I know all these people. Anyway, Jake was sort of the hero last week because I think he gave a couple kids rides in his cyber truck. Oh, that's nice of him. After he posted this video that we're going to leave you with, check it out. I don't know if you know this. Um, If you've never been in a Tesla, you may not. Mm -hmm. But Teslas have demos. They come with like demos. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, remember getting a Casio keyboard as a kid? Oh, yeah. You'd press the demo button Mm -hmm. and it would just go nuts. Yep. Kind of that. Mm -hmm. And it looks like when you put two cyber trucks together, they do it like in tandem or something. Oh, or maybe they just timed it really well when they hit that button. (laughs) Or maybe they did that. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, Jake, let me use this video. Check out two cyber trucks having a little fun in Idaho Falls. Pretty fancy. <laughs> yeah, pretty fancy. Have you heard the rumor that raccoons um, try to break into cyber trucks? <laughs> yeah. Apparently because they think that they kind of sort of look a little bit like dumpsters. <laughs> <laughs> I have heard that. I've heard all the Tesla and Elon hate. But I just think this is kind of cool. Yeah, I think the video is super cool. Thanks so much for listening. Thanks for watching. Subscribe on YouTube. Have a great week. We'll see you next time. Bye.